without uh, further ado, I'd like to introduce Carl Carrollton, who is the uh, chairman of the National Minority Technology Council. Uh, and Carl has been, was chairman and founder of NMTC, uh, founded about 12 years ago. Before that, he was a very active uh, tech entrepreneur, uh, assigned on several uh, 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 federal government boards, and I'd like to add a new friend. And uh, he's going to be um, really sharing with us a, a really exciting vision about how community colleges and small businesses can uh, partner uh, to get more minority students into the ICT uh, career pipeline supported by <coughs> local small minority businesses. So, Carl? Thank you, Olivia. So today, I wanted to have a conversation about what I call a tale of two cities. And really, it's a convergence conversation. It's really looking at STEM, looking at diversity on one side, and looking at small business and federal procurement on the other. So I will recognize that this is probably not a conversation that you're involved in often. But I'm encouraging you that at the end of the conversation, that. I'd like for you to think about thinking about things differently. And that's one of the things we want to do is stimulate new thought. So um, first I wanted to introduce the council, introduce myself, and to really kind of talk about um, why we exist. Uh, we exist as a 501c6, not a c3. And that means that we actually are interested in the common business interest of people that own technology companies, and they happen to be minorities. So um, it actually is a very large marketplace. It's 65,000 businesses that actually have employees across the United States. And, and a little bit more germane to what's happening here is it's about 230,000 1099s. And so what a 1099 is, is that there are folks that finish your program and then they decide to go into business for themselves. And you know, you're a database administrator and you work for some years and you go on business with yourself, you become a subcontractor, and then that's really what we want to talk about is that those 65,000 companies actually employ 500,000 people in the United States of America. So I represent a $100 billion industry in the United States. It's a quiet industry, um, but germane to STEM and diversity, it's a very important industry. So how were... Uh, situated across the United States. We've got 10 regions across the United States. We've got districts located all across the United States. In fact, we're going to talk a little bit about the San Francisco district. And what's interesting about this is that with our um, national reach, and we're, we're modeled up against the Small Business Administration. With our national reach, we actually have, for instance, in San Francisco, we've got 375 companies that, again, are minority technology companies. So why that's interesting is that with, I, I, and I've had an opportunity to talk to a lot of you over the last day, um, you're located all across the nation. It's amazing, this conference. So we actually have members all across the nation, and we're wanting to connect, because actually making technology relevant, well, you know that. And the other thing that's very interesting about you is that a lot of you worked in industry be before you became faculty. And that's really important because you actually know real world. And I want to talk about that as well. So just finally about the council, in order to uh, de uh, deliver for our members what it is that we're wanting to do, which is to have them grow, uh, we actually have initiatives. The, as you can see, one of our major initiatives is our STEM broadband initiative. We're not just thinking about science, technology, engineering, and math. We're also thinking about broadband. We believe that they converge. We believe that actually within urban communities especially, we really want to not just, uh, it's not just about digital literacy, it's making sure that, that folks have technology access. And because we're experts in that area, we believe that we can make that happen. Today, I wanted to speak about the two on the right. One is the Hub IT initiative, and the other is our deal centers. So, what it is that um, I'm wanting to leave you with is that 
a hundred billion dollar industry employing 500,000 people is a new place for you to think about where your students could go to work. So thinking about your students going to work for a major corporation, we, we know that. We had some people yesterday talking about Apple. You know, we, we, we know about Lockheed Martin. We know about these, you know, the IBMs. We know about these large corporations. But where you are locally, there's a new kind of place that I'm wanting you to think about, and it's small business. Now, I do recognize that it's harder to talk to small business because it's harder to find them, but there's something really important about a small business owner. They're willing to do a level of remediation that a lot of major corporations aren't willing to do. So what we're wanting to talk about today is, a, is an emerging ecosystem. It's a conversation about what is happening in the federal government, and it's a conversation about what's happening in urban communities. And I'm going to ask that as faculty and as some administrators, that you really think about going out into the community. And that's one of the, and, and I'm going to give you a little bit of extra information that you can go out in the community and talk to folks about, and they're going to be very interested in what you have to say. So we've had an election, um, and not to get a lot political, but um, the fact that we've had an election is actually important to this conversation. For the last four years, this administration has been doing a lot of work to push business to small business. In fact, so much work, I've been contacted and talked with a lot of major corporations where they're actually analyzing a loss on their side of the ledger because of the gain on small business. So why is that important? Well, when you have a student come to you and they're thinking about, well, you know, what do I do next? I'm wanting you to consider not only telling them that getting a job is an important thing. You know, we, we go to school, we get a job. I'm wanting you to also think about, you actually have a diverse group that you're talking to. I'm wanting you to think about that, you know, there could be a lot of students that you're talking to that owning a business is probably more likely and probably more important for them than actually getting a job. So let's talk about the environment that I'm, I'm, I work in. Um, one of the major uh, uh, vendors, we're, we're a major vendor to the federal government. So um, as I shared with you, the federal government's really pushing small business. I'm gonna show you some numbers. They're extraordinary. The, um, when, when, and it's really interesting. I've had uh, conversations with folks here and I don't know if you really realize how important the community college system is. I have, now this isn't something I just discovered, but I'm really becoming to understand that it is absolutely strategic that everyone here understands that you're actually the key folks, the key pipeline for ICT for America. And I don't mean that like in a drama way, I mean that like that's for real. So, I mean it is. <laughs> So I'm saying that to say that when I say things like cloud, big data, agile software development, network engineering, fiber, you know, Ethernet over fiber, there's not any words, series of words that I could say that you wouldn't understand. And I'll share with you, you could go to a four-year college and you can say these words and they're going to get theoretical. When they say to you, you're going to get practical. You're touching machines. You're, touch, you're having people do scenario-based work. And I just want to share with you that the reason why that's important to our industry, and I don't need to be crass, but I need to really make sure that you understand, when we hire someone, we make money. So it's not altruistic. So I'm really wanting you to hear that you're actually our supply chain and that by honoring what you're doing and by coming in and making sure that you understand what our needs are, it actually is symbiotic. We actually will create more business. So it's a very honoring thing to be here with you, but I'm wanting you to know that our members, and we have 9,000 members across the United States, our members want to communicate with you. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, they don't know how extraordinary the work that you're doing. So um, the last thing I want to share with you is teaming. And um, we're going to get into a little bit more detail about teaming. And what I want to share with you relative to teaming is that we're proposing, we're offering, we're exploring the idea of bringing education into what it is that we do. 
So one of the things I want to share with you is how big the bread box is. Uh, one of the things as an entrepreneur, as someone that is looking at marketplaces, we like to find out, well, if we're going to do business in that marketplace, how big is it? So I want to share with you, small business in the United States of America doing business with the federal government is a multi-billion dollar enterprise. Now, I'll share, just to give you uh, some context, doing business with the federal government, for every six dollars in the federal government, it's, for every six dollars in the federal government, there's one dollar going to contractors. So it's 402 billion dollars worth of dollars that get spent in our country. Out of that, when we look at, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this hub zone, uh, we're going to get into some slides about the hub zone. So what I want to share with you, and again, we're going to talk a little bit, we're going to get a little specific, and I apologize, but we're going to get a little specific about how a technology company, especially a technology company doing business with the federal government, thinks, and there's a very specific reason why I want to do that. I would really, and I, I'm going to get into this, but I want to kind of have you think about, you know, what is the context and why I'm saying to this. I want, I want, I'm asking, I'm hoping, that you actually go back to work and call a small business and talk about these slides. You'll be able to get access to them. Actually have a conversation about, hey, this guy talked about this, what do you think? The reason why I want you to do that is that the more that you understand, and I know this is obvious, but I'll say it, the more that you understand about what small business is engaged in, especially technology companies, and that the fact that you begin to talk their language, they'll begin to try to understand what your language is. And your language is you're wanting to make sure that your students have an experience. But I'm actually going to go a little step further. So I'm going to have a conversation about $2.4 billion. The federal government with their hub zone program is short, $2.5 billion. So that's a $2.5 billion opportunity in the United States of America. The National Minority Technology Council is taking on a billion. That's 74,000 jobs. So our STEM program is looking at how can we employ 74,000 jobs and work with the federal government education to make that happen. Again, let's get a little more detailed. Hub zone. So what's a hub zone? All right, so here we are. There's Chinatown in the top right-hand corner. Let me show you where the hub zone is in there. Believe it or not, the yellow, the orange, is all a hub zone. So what's important about a hub zone? So this is the hub zone. So this is actually a historically underutilized business zone. It's the United States Census determines that this area right here that you see, we are right now sitting in a hub zone. So what's important about that? Well, the federal government says, and they changed the rules, that if you have an employee, 35% of your employees work 35 hours per month, and there's a little detail, they actually don't have to work for you, but let's not get into the details. Um, but if they, if you have, and your principal office is in a hub zone, then there's two benefits for you. First off, you get a 10% discount. So if you charge, you, you can charge $110 and the other person charges $100 and it's the same price. The other is they have set-asides, $13 billion worth of set-asides, of which historically over the last five years they've been $2 billion short, $3 billion short. <coughs> So what we're promoting, because again, we're actually wanting to create economic opportunity in urban communities, but this is what an urban community looks like. What we're promoting is having companies become hub zone certified and then work with the federal government. But we're going one step further. We actually believe, and I'll, I'll just give you an example. Um, this is a minority technology company out of Mountain View. Um, this is a contract that they were awarded. It's a $4.8 million contract. Just to give you a sense of how much business is going on, in ICT, in the federal government, it's 647 million. There's, 50, there's, there's, there's things that's funny, the, we're in Silicon Valley, they talk about deal flow. There's 5,663 contracts let in ICT in the federal government. It's a very lucrative area. But what's the difference? So, typically, and I, I know this is how, how it is normally, community college, education is, and is, is, is one side, industry is the other side. When you think of IBM, when you think of Northrop Grumman, when you think of um, Cisco, these are major corporations, multi-billion dollar corporations. 
So you're, you're kind of the little guy, and they're the big guys. When you deal with small business, you become the big guys. And it's a key distinction that I really want to share with you. Because you're the big guys, you actually have something to offer them. And they don't know it. Your students, because your students, first off, a lot of your students are not fresh out of high school. A lot of them are veterans that are coming in after serving our countries. A lot of them are folks that are two, three times had their own uh, businesses. They're now just retooling. A lot of them are college graduates that are coming to get real skills. So I'm just sharing with you, these owners don't know how valuable your students are. So I'm just saying that partnering with small business, you, you can actually be their lab. The other piece is that, and I really want to share this with you, you actually talking to a small business owner, it's important, the owner of a technology company, you as faculty, if you actually came and talked to them, they would not only welcome you into their business, they would allow you to shadow with them, spend a day with them. You will learn so much. And that's the kind of content that I believe we need to give our students. So again, kind of sharing with you, um, you know, so I'm wanting to make sure that your folks actually become owners, not employees. I really believe in my heart that there is a percentage, and we're, we're investigating what percentage it is, but there's a percentage of folks that go to community college that are going there on purpose to start a business. And we need to really start looking at that as an ecosystem, and we're really starting needing to partner to make sure, well, if that's what they're doing, how do we need to change the, change the curriculum to make that happen? It takes a lot of guts to be in your own business. What I'm just sharing with you, there are students that are coming to you that actually have the dollars to make it happen. Um, I, I'm just saying that this, this right here, so we're in Hub, Hub Zone, this is a beautiful new building. To a small business owner, this is unbelievable. So you having this kind of facility, this thing, and you partnering with them, they might be able to do a conference here, they might be able to do something, but the important thing is you can actually create an environment where you're becoming their incubator. You can not only incubate the companies that are out there, you can incubate students that are with you. The last thing is really looking at how is it, because I really want to get down to some specifics. How, what can you go back to your school and actually do? Think about doing a speaker's bureau. There are, the subjects that you're working on are absolutely germane to a minority technology company. Finding out who they are, working with them, having them come and speak at your school, you'll find that you might have other areas to speak at, you can get faculty, you can create panels. There's a lot of excitement that can happen in education that's germane to what we're doing. Okay. So what about diversity? So real quickly, we know that STEM is hot. We really, it's a national security issue. Um, I gotta be honest with you that there are, the communities are under siege. And again, just to kind of make sure we're clear, I believe that community colleges are a key linkage. So much so, let me just play this. and I'll, Let me just set this up real quick. Virginia State University, um, has, is working on a pathway, uh, a, a project shadow program. And I think this is important because this gentleman here is Bernard Robinson. He's actually the owner of a minority technology company. I think it's important to kind of look at, you know, what do these guys look like? management information systems and did the shadowing at networking technologies and support. Hello. Keith Sutton, the founder of Virginia State University, and the founder of Virginia State University, the impression he makes on prospective employers. This will all of you over everything. Okay. And this is how to be specific. Okay. I didn't know how important it is the first five seconds that you meet someone. Yeah. Um, nice to meet you. And that's the first impression that you can get from someone. And it's just very important for you to just, you, you gotta nail it. It's a, it's a hit or miss. If you have a bad impression, then you're not gonna remember you when you your name come across the desk again and the phone over the interview or phone over the resume and phone just in a conversation. Let me take you inside of our nerve center. Sam Hammaker's John. So, sir, um, how often do we um, sit down with President? Bernard Robinson is the president and CEO at NTS. He says that Project Shadow helps produce students who are truly ready for the hard work that comes after college. It's the difference between truly understanding 
what's best for your students. And those are very disparate objectives as opposed to putting on a, a program that gets students to a curriculum. I believe you can get your A plus and your network plus right here. That grip should get my attention. It's like, you should be one of those. Oh, you, you can get to a curriculum that's great. The question here is, are you preparing them adequately to get job in industry? How would you raise the bar so what you can do? So again, I just want to kind of expose you, you know, well, what does one look like, right? So <laughs> the interesting thing about an owner of a minority technology company, in fact, an owner of a technology company, is that they are very engaged in what they do. And to bring that energy into your classroom, I think, is critical. And, and actually, I think, in a middle school level as well, the more the community college interface with high schools, you taking a responsible role to bring folks into the speaker bill, to bring folks into the high school, It'll increase your pipeline into your university, but that's what I believe that we need to do to fix this problem, is we need to make the program relevant. And having a minority, an older minority technology company be there, and they're in every one of your communities, I believe can actually create that relevance. So, to kind of close things out, we actually have a big idea. I'll take a couple of minutes to talk about it. Um, we're actually creating deal centers, which is actually um, looking at entrepreneurialism, advocacy, and learning in one area, and I'll talk a little bit about that. So we actually have a, you know, how we're going to get it done. We're going to actually uh, create partnerships, including education, and these are, these are kind of the roles, the folks we're, we're working with, minority technology companies, economic development, the federal government, large integrators as, as subs, not primes, and, um, and education. And the, the language that I want to share with you is that we're actually creating jobs. So you're on our supply chain to create jobs, and the contracts that we um, have create the jobs, and the important thing is that we're wanting to measure it. In order to make this happen, um, it's, it's GRC. It's the Governance Risk Compliance. We actually have to, our deal center, part of it, governance is key. Trust is key. So we're doing detailed stakeholder analysis with each one of these constituents to make sure that we're integrating back and forth, which is one of the reasons why I'm here, to make sure that we understand what your needs are, you understand what our needs are, and that we all understand how we can work together so we can actually create this ecosystem. <coughs> we're calling it the uh, Small Business ICT Academic Alliance. The reason why we're calling it that is because we understand the NEMN culture, but the other side of it is, is that we want to make this an inclusive program <coughs> And we believe that it's really germane to this conversation is not just a minority conversation, it's really a small business conversation. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Well, Can you repeat it, the question, please. So um, the question is, how is it that we're able to find out where the contracts are? And um, well, it's down. Um, the federal government is very transparent, and uh, because the federal government is very transparent, uh, it, all the information that you need is literally on the internet. So um, the, the information that I received as far as uh, that contract, oh, you can get it back. Okay. This is data right on the internet. So not only can you take historical information as far as who, so, and, and, and just to kind of let you know, um, this is on, um, and I can, you know, if you call me, I'll, I'll give you the details. I'm like that. Smallbusiness.data.gov. Uh, so it gives you de details down to, um, you can download an Excel spreadsheet. It's um, 
about, uh, it's over 6,000 for this, for this database, um, and it shows every transaction that happens in the federal government. So um, if you wanted to find out in your community, you can download the spreadsheet, find out what companies are in your community. And could you imagine calling up a company and saying, hey, I saw you just got a $20 million award for, um, you know, data, for database consolidation. Do you need any help? <laughs> so I'm just saying that data is key and information is key. And one of the key things that I want, one of the main things I want to share with you today is that we've got to create these linkages on the education to industry level. You know, I know that's a duh, but still, I'm just saying within the minority technology industry that if we create that linkage, then what's going to happen is we can begin to strategize how to actually talk to the future students. So that's a great question. Um, and I'll share with you the other thing is because I'm a C6 instead of a C3, we can lobby. So we're actually in the federal government talking with folks. I actually had a gentleman from the Department of Commerce here yesterday. So, I mean, that's just part of what we're able to do. Yeah, I was wondering, um, if you've been doing this a while, have you worked with community colleges already and created some kind of framework, or are you just starting to do this now? Yeah, so um, actually for us, it's a framework for, um, we're, we're, we're actually looking from the, uh, the pre-K to 20. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, we've got programs that we're developing for pre-K. So, I mean, our understanding is that, w that this for us is not a national security issue, it's a supply chain issue. So we, we're, we're focused, we've done, a, and, and we brought people on board that have a lot of expertise in this area, um, but we're exploring right now. I mean, that's, <coughs> this, is, this is an exploration mode right now, but we're technologists, so, it's, so we're iterative. It's not, it's not like, oh, I wonder, we're acting, we're doing, and we're changing, and we're finding out where we make mistakes, and we upset people, then we kind of, you know, try to do it again, and, you know, so it's iterative. We're, we're, we're rapid application designing, agile, so <laughs> developing this project right now. Can we take one more question? <coughs> are the uh, regional offices that you've identified in one of your first slides, are, are there contact people that you have from your organization listed somewhere? Yeah, so um, one of the things that we're developing right now is we, I have, I'll say that we've got about, so the answer to the question is yes, for some regions. Um, we don't have all the regions filled, uh, all, the, all the regions filled at this point. Um, but the, the, the thing about our industry is that not only do we know each other, but you'd be amazed at what would happen with just one contact. So, you know, and I welcome you to communicate with me and we will, I mean, if you're at this conference, I'll just connect you with companies. Um, because the real thing is, is I'm wanting to connect you with the technology companies. I mean, that's really where the action happens. Because once you meet one, it's, and, and, you, and it, you, the fact that they're a minority, they happen to own a technology company, you'll kind of understand that they have a little bit of a, a slant on the world, and the slant is they're willing to remediate. But the information and the connection you have will be germane to all small business. And that's what we're really trying to say. Let's think about small business as a separate category other than just you know, manufacturing or large corporations. So I appreciate your listening. Thank you.